Well, once again, it looks like I've lost my hive. And I did everything that, you know, it's said to do. There's the extra board above for insulation. I added a wool sweater over top. They had feed. They were fed until I couldn't feed them anymore. They were getting sour cream. But here they are, all clustered on one side. So the only thing I can think of is where I had the hive was in a microclimate that was super cold. You can see here on April 14th that there's still a lot of snow and it took a lot of resources for the bees to stay warm and they just overextended themselves. So we did move the bees. We put them in a location that was much more sunny and the sun did reach earlier. When I chose that location, I thought, oh, they're sheltered, it'll be warmer, the bees will have to use less resources, but that kind of kicked backward. So now in their new location, the sun hits earlier in the season and extends later in the fall. So we do also have some ideas to protect them a little bit more in the winter, to keep them out of direct wind, but we'll show you more of that later in the season. If you have any ideas or tips or tricks on where to locate your bee boxes, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I do know that Dr. Leo Sharaskin puts his bee boxes in a light wooded area. So again, it is under, under trees. This bee thing is hard. Yeah, it's a hard thing to figure out. One, one bee, one hive at a time. This is Kirsten with Field Farm and Forest. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.